I'm going to talk about pseudo-file systems and how we can make them normal. Um, let's see, does this not work? Oh, I have to turn it on. Yeah. So a little background for this. Uh, back in 2022, I gave a little presentation here for what we did for EventFS, um, how we could do just-in-time creation of de-entry inodes. And the EventFS was kind of broke, uh, made up of TraceFS, which was based off of DebugFS. And that means it used de-entry as its main way of handling objects. Um, so EventFS uh, used de-entry because I thought that was a proper way to do it. Uh, Linus told me otherwise in some fun, nice ways of uh, uh, telling me. <laughs> so, um, so Christian Browner also suggested using uh, kernFS. And at first, when I looked at that, it looked like the only users was basically like the sysfs file system and, and C groups and no one else. And I, it, I saw like a very, it looked like it was very designed for that aspect and I couldn't really map very well. How could I use this for what I need to do? And that was just basically my own ignorance kind of understanding everything. Um, but after playing with it a little bit, um, you know, Thank you, Christian, for doing that little patch to give me an idea of ideas. Uh, I see it would be actually very easy to kind of convert all of debugfs files and even tracefs files over to kernfs. It's a little bit more complex. Although it doesn't work for eventfs. And the reason why it doesn't work for eventfs is um, the reason why I did eventfs was because we're doing a lot more tracing in the field for Chromebooks. Chromebooks, we have Chromebooks out there of two gigs of RAM. Memory is very much of a hot commodity there, so we really look for every, saving every megabyte we can. And when I think, or what's it called, I asked uh, Alexei he, why he wasn't using instances, because he was, he, in the BPF tracing, they have like a, a way of tracing to the ring buffer with the trace print K kind of, and they went right to the main trace buffer, and I said, why don't you use instances? That way you're not going to you know, mess with the regular trace print K. And he says, well, we looked at instances, and they're really, really expensive in memory. And I'm like, really? So I went down and I created an instance. Now, an instance, which I think I do have here. Yeah, this is an idea of what an instance is. So you have the, um, and I'll come back to the other slide. So if I CD into syskernel tracing and do LS, you see all these files. What an instance is, is you could do a make dir instances foo, and what that does is it creates a new ring buffer that doesn't, that's separate from all the other ring buffers, and it's not really, it's more of an interface than really making a directory. It actually is a way of saying, here's my new instance, and here, it's, it's a limited amount of things that you can do on an instance. That's why there's less files. But there's more control and everything you can do. And there's the events directory there that is thousands and thousands of files, because every system call has, or every event, sorry, so every uh, trace event has a system and then it has a bunch of control, another like the event directory for itself with a bunch of control files and that just blows up. But just to give you an idea, before eventfs, I did, I used free slab info and then mem info, which I kind of, I don't know why it's kind of different than free, but um, so I did, this is the before and after difference from I did a free, make dir free. And I said, okay, What's the delta? Well, free showed that it, the size of memory dropped down by 45 megabytes from one instance. Um, the slab info is, this is in bytes. I went through and looked at all the slabs, summed them up from all, like the content. Not, I didn't look at how much slab was missing, so maybe that's one thing about free. Like if it had like extra spaces in the slab, I didn't count those. And you know, that showed, um, was it a decrease? So like 27 megabytes within the, um, uh, the slab info, mem info did around 44 uh, megabytes. So I did the work for the eventfs in two stages. One stage was kind of like what kernfs could have done. It made everything dynamic. It made all the inodes and the entries dynamic, but it still required a small descriptor for every single file that existed. And that saved tremendous. That brought it from 45 megabytes down to 27 megabytes, or sorry, 17 megabytes. So that was a drop of 27 megabytes savings that we had by making just as instances. And then 
what we use, and I'll explain a little bit later, I changed the event DFS to do callbacks, and I'll explain that a little bit later, and that actually dropped it, actually one or two, a lot of, this is very, depending on what you have enabled, but it up to like two megabytes more saving. You may say, what's the big deal about two megabytes? But like I said, when you're on a two gigabyte machine that we care about, two megabytes is a lot. And also, we plan on making a lot more instances. So this isn't just a one instance deal. We plan on having different subsystems doing different tracing, so they're gonna be creating different instances. So this is going to, uh, we really care about how much memory this is. And um, I showed this, this. Uh, so basically, the prototypes um, is for DebugFS, is you pass the de-entry. And now what my whole, that fun conversation I had with Linus about de-entries was that de-entries should never have been exposed outside the file system. According to him, he was like saying, why are de-entries created before the system is even mounted? I'm like, well, that's how you create the files to, to mount it. And it didn't seem like he, you know, Linus even knew anything about DebugFS or how it worked. And I just based my knowledge of how DebugFS worked was the way you did things. And that was really the, the, when a lot of the flames back and forth between Linus and I was, I had a misconception of how things were supposed to be done, and I would be pushing that misconception and thinking Linus is wrong. Once I realized that, oh, the entries should never have been exposed in the first place, Linus is right, yes. <laughs> Whoops, is it on? It's, it's the... Yeah. There are several stages of flames in this, so this I is just one of them. I don't know which uh, <laughs> stage I have observed, but uh, let's just say that uh, the stuff uh, it had been doing when I looked at it was references back to the, the entries from, from Hell's Nose Ward when... With, that was... That was really scary. And uh, that was a lot more convoluted than anything uh, DebugFS uh, had ever done. I'm not fond of uh, what DebugFS is doing. There are other problems with it. Uh, but uh, let's just say that uh, you weren't at the time of uh, last flames between you and Linus, I've observed, uh, had been considerably more scary. Uh, after uh, the changes in last window, uh, that got much saner. The, well, the things, the thing that EventFS, so I'm not really going to talk about much, I'm going to explain EventFS stuff on it, but I'm actually more concerned about DebugFS the way it is today, and maybe we should update it. Uh, let's just say that uh, DebugFS, uh, as it is today, um, has certain problems with uh, lifetime issues and uh, uh, lack of uh, sane uh, exclusion between uh, I.O. on uh, opened file and removal of uh, that file by uh, any event. Uh, so my question is actually, um, my thing is, so here I'm actually talking about this, and by the way, just real quick, just just so you, this is what I copied, so TraceFS filed that. Question is, should we switch everything over to KernFS? Does KernFS have the issues no. that DebugFS have? So you're saying uh, no. KernFS has different issues. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the same tree for entire uh, machine. Uh, it's it has no uh, knowledge of well. It tries to do something for different namespaces. Mm, it does so badly. Uh, I mean, debugfs isn't uh, debugfs doesn't have to care about namespaces, right? Uh, uh, that's not true. Try it in. Uh, Try no. to use it in container, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I hope this is not mountable in actual containers. And people it, want it mounted in containers. I've yeah, had but that's, ins that's, that's insane on the face of it. We're not <laughs> going to do this. Okay. Well, you, you might have different instances of uh, uh, something like the uh, for different con containers. Uh, then so, why not? No, 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 but okay. actually, the is uh, something I would never use on production box. Okay. Uh, uh, L1 it's far too dangerous. So actually, let me switch over to something for a different, to hit your point about DebugFS. The DebugFS is something where we kind of play and do, then what happens is, and as I've seen this with other people because they talk to me about it, it's like they end up with a production API that they're ready to make out. And they said, you know what? We don't want to be part of DebugFS anymore. We want to switch over to yes. our own system. This is why I said if DebugFS followed, the API of DebugFS was much closer to KernFS or something that was more uh, logical to switch over. So we could have like DebugFS 
be that. Like I said, right now, debug FS uses the entries, and I just, when I said I need it, I need, that's what happened with TraceFS. I needed it outside of debug FS. And Greg Harmon said, yeah, just copy it and just wait it over. And that's what I did. And that's why I found out that that was actually wrong to do. And I'm afraid to, I want, basically, I'm here to say, let's not have someone else follow my steps and have DebugFS being a cleaner system that can easily be switched to something that's more sane that can't be in containers. Yeah, I, I'm, just saying, I, I'm just saying that as far as I know, last time I looked at this code, I might be wrong because I haven't looked at it in a long time. When you mount DebugFS, it's a global instance for the whole system. Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. Then we're on the safe because the, the, what I don't want is that you have multiple instances and then you can mount it from containers. If you have uh, some object that has a lifetime more interesting than uh, yeah, one module is uh, inserted, object gets created, one module gets removed, the object gets uh, destroyed, anything more interesting than that, and uh, you are asking for trouble if uh, you have any debug first objects referring to that thing. So maybe if I ask the question again, what is the proper path that we should educate kernel developers on that to, you know, when they uh, uh, progress from debug FS to a real FS I like mean, interface? Uh, they need to, uh, there are different problems with debug FS. Uh, I, I don't like the way it uses DeAndre as a, for keying uh, the actual I.O. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, uh, there are many, many real problems with debug FS, but uh, the most fundamental one is uh, that it doesn't uh, know anything about uh, lifetime of underlying objects, and it can't. Yeah. And it has, unlike, say, CSFS, uh, not even a shred of mechanism for uh, uh, preventing access to uh, uh, removed objects uh, by uh, using I.O. on a file that had been opened back before that object got removed. Hmm. Okay. So uh, uh, lifetime issues are considerably more scary as far as I'm concerned. And uh, lack of infrastructure for that. Well, I think they have something for uh, uh, something right now, uh, but uh, I hadn't looked at that uh, for a while. But uh, a while ago, uh, it had a lot of problems with uh, with that scenario. Well, I mean, one thing I said. What about the de-entry issue? The fact that it, it uses de-entry as its main object handler, is that going to be a problem or not, or? It may be a problem, it may be not, but uh, and you then can uh, have the entry tree uh, serving. So code. I don't know how much in debug vest, I know in production systems you would never mount it, but I do know people that actually do mount <laughs> debug vest and mount the system, but then you have, I don't know how many files are in debug vest usually. Um, is that going to be a, a memory concern? Mike. Yeah. You, ha you have no control whatsoever what actually can show up in debugfs as, as far as I understand. And sort of that, that's a massive problem. I, I mean, you can only access it if your caps is admin or something. I mean, it's pretty restricted as, as far as I can tell because, you know, the files that you are maybe able to interact with or write to might, mm -hmm. I don't know, deadlock your system or crash your system. So, I mean, mounting debugfs on a production system is Adventurous. Yes. So I think you're asking the wrong question. Probably. You're asking the question of how do we migrate from DebugFS for stuff that's been developed to where it's going on the production system. The question should be where do you develop the code for the production system to begin with? Not using DebugFX to start with is the right way to go. If well, it's something that you're going to actually deploy in a production system, you should be starting with it in SysFS. In which interface? In SysFS. Well, I thought SysFS is restrictive in what, supposedly I thought SysFS is supposed to have, like every file is supposed to have a single value and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't bay that very much in various <laughs> places. You look at various SysFS files, especially in file system stuff and so on, yeah. and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But 
what I'm trying to say is that I think you're approaching it from this is how I did it. Yeah, well, no. It, well, there is other. I'm not the only one doing that. Yeah. And a lot of times, people don't even know if it's going to be a production thing. It's usually like, oh, this debug, thi this debug interface ended up being, wow, this is actually useful in a production environment. But we don't want debugfs. Right. But yeah, and what I'm trying to say is that debugfs is probably the wrong thing to be thinking about anyway in that sort of situation. Well, um, from a non-file system person, it's the easiest thing to use. That seriously e is the easiest way to create files, directories, and stuff. It's debugfs is stupid no, simple. No, proc is far easier, but yeah. You know, look, look at it this way: um, <laughs> if you're writing production code, you shouldn't be leaving anything in debugfs. It's, a, it's as simple as that. You know. you, what what people should do is a lot different than what people actually do. But <laughs> well, I didn't know any better. Yeah, and and, and right, the thing is actually, my point here is somewhat is a lessons learned. I didn't know any better because I didn't. I just said, "Oh, debugfs is easy. I'll do this." I didn't know debugfs was not the way to do it, um, and you know, that I didn't know alternatives. So, yes, I think I have, but a lot of times experts are busy doing their own thing. <laughs> Because I almost CC'd all my stuff to like FS, the mailing list and everything like that, and very, no comments from anyone, so I'm like, oh, I must be doing okay. <laughs> if you need an uh, insane amount of objects, and uh, I don't remember which adjective you've used, uh, probably wasn't insane, but was something close to that. Uh, okay, very high amount of objects. Uh, then uh, you probably want uh, some uh, hybrid scheme. Uh, yeah. You, well, you you don't have uh, to put everything in the cache all the time. You can uh, say put some skeleton in there. Yeah. So yeah. By the way, I, I, dynamically. I, I, if you want, I can actually show how I implemented eventfs with a callback, or no. <laughs> but that's not really what this was about, but go on. So <laughs> yeah. to your question for a second, the, the why kernfs for him, as far as I understood, didn't work, and which what I didn't appreciate in the first case is uh, that I didn't understand how much insane amount of files uh, and you're creating. So mm -hmm. it's basically, as far as I understood, every time you call make dir to make a new, new instance in a tracefs directory, you're essentially duplicating all of tracefs, which means if yes. you have 100,000 XFS trace points entries in there, you now suddenly have 100,000 extra trace of, uh, XFS trace yeah. points in there. And so if you use the kernfs structure, kernfs conceptually, in my opinion, at least does it the right way in the sense that it has a metadata structure, it allocates per node in the system, so you can wipe the decache out, you can wipe all the inodes mm -hmm. out, and uh, then you can recreate it on demand if you go back to looking at it again. But yeah. the problem is he's probably has too many files for that. Even. Yeah, so I think the, the real challenge here is there is no one general solution. So if, if the goal is to say this is what all future kernel developers need to do whenever they have something that started with something, right? Maybe it's bugfs, whatnot. And the, the answer is you can do something really simple if you only have a handful of files you only need one instance, mm -hmm. they're only global, right. then it's su stupid simple. If you want to do something with a million files and multiple instances and you're trying to conserve memory, then maybe there isn't a good general solution. And the, the problem so, is we're trying no, to create a general solution. By the way, right? no, by the way, so what? So we document, I, never yeah. use debug it, us, and here's a stupid simple thing if you only need a handful of files, that will If you need no. a handful of files, then just use simple fill super right. and be done exactly. with it. Look what Xenophobia yeah, exactly. is doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, stupid, uh, and that's probably a good uh, solution for a bunch of drivers if you want. Uh, if, say, uh, you have file system that uses PCI uh, device number, well, P PCI bus number, uh, et cetera, as uh, device name, yeah, you, you can mount it, you can read something from that PCI card, whatever, why not? Uh, at some point I just done that for, uh, I, I gave up trying to fight with uh, LM sensors. 
uh, on an ancient uh, motherboard with Cretinous yeah. uh, device on it. Uh, took me about, I think, uh, 40 lines of uh, yeah. uh, on the entire thing, and and that was all. For dump stuff, uh, yeah. uh, but, there but are many solutions. Sure, but my, my argument but, but is I, ninety percent of the people who want pseudo file no, no, systems right. are dumb stuff. No, no, no. Right? actually, and that's exactly actually my point here. Yeah. By the way, I want to make very clear: I'm not here to talk about emulating EventFS, the thousands of files. That's a unique thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, there are debugfs, and I've I've heard, I've seen people saying, "Hey, I got stuff in debugfs. I want to make it into a production environment. I want to make a new file system out of it." I'm like, what do we tell them to say, hey, this is what you need to do? Uh, the, the, problem is, the, the problem with the generic answer for this is, for example, that already depends on whether or not do you have a multi-instance file system, meaning every time you, you, you mount right. it, you get a new instance, or does it need to be namespace aware? Uh, it's like before you haven't answered these questions, I, I, I think it's very hard to say, like, this is, this is the way to do it. Uh, one thing about uh, kernel for CSFS, call it whatever you want, uh, that might be none of those, is that yeah. uh, if you have a bunch of processes hitting the same entry, you get, well, you used to get, I hadn't rechecked that with uh, revalidate changes uh, they'd done there, but it used to uh, decay very soon. So it, it not only didn't scale, it, it didn't scale very, very badly. And pattern had been a bunch of uh, threads uh, trying to open the same file. So, what well, I really like, this is being recorded, right? I, I think so. Because really, actually, one of my goals of this was having a nice little document. Like, everything you're saying is like gold to me right now. The, the, the saying, these are things you need to worry about. These are the questions you need to ask. These are things. This should be all documented. So sure. when you come in and you say, hey, I, want, I need a interface I want to use a file system for, what are the steps I should take? Having like a document, instead of going bothering you guys and say, hey, guys, how should I do this? If we had something document saying, well, is it going to be namespace aware? Is it only this? Have lists? And these are the solutions you could have. That's called frequently asked questions. Yes. <laughs> But do we ha is it documented that way? If I no, no, it isn't, and, and, and that is, I think that is a fair point uh, because, for example, especially when it comes to uh, multi-instance and namespace-aware file systems, which are nowadays probably the most common ones that usually get added, at least if it's not really trivial, these are probably things where we should say, okay, this is the way to do it. Because current FS, for in, in this example, is not really a good example. Uh, C group FS is technically uh, namespace-aware, but it is single instance. Mm -hmm. It's always the same instance, but it behaves namespace aware. It shows yeah. different contents depending upon yeah. which namespace you are in and... Um, yeah, and actually people want okay. Trace of S to do in that. In case if it's recorded, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll stop here. Okay. <laughs> Am I up? Okay. Thank you. That's a very good, thank you. I think it was productive. <laughs> <laughs>